boom, 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 boom. Yeah, the roofers, I live in an apartment complex. It's a two-floor building. I'm on the first floor, and um, I can still hear the banging, but it's not horrible. It's not the end of the world. Um, and so I think it's okay to record this. I hope I'm not wrong. I do have a Blue Yeti, and they tend to be very sensitive, but still, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's that big a deal. Well, it's kind of based on... It's actually the song I used for the intro. For a while, I made uh, three or four hours worth of beat music, kind of like Chemical Brothers type stuff. Uh, big beat music. And that was all part of that time period for me, which was about a decade ago. And it is a song I used at the very beginning of it, every single one of these episodes. So uh, at a point, if you ever, if you did watch that episode with the song, you'd probably go, oh yeah, I recognize that. So if I can actually use the boat, you see, normally that would have destroyed the boat. You hit it a little harder. Maybe, maybe I can get it to break or stay on there good. See, that would have definitely broke the boat. So that's why the sand, soul sand, is a good thing to use. And I think there's a dungeon or something down that little hole that I just walked by. I can't make that jump. I might make that jump. Let's try it. Hope I don't die. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, she was worried for his well-being. You know, nothing more. And he took it the wrong way, and it's like a violation of his privacy when none of this has occurred before. It was just the fact that she had seen the house in a state that um, he didn't want people to see it. And he was embarrassed, so he took his embarrassment out on her. And now is being sarcastic asshole and calling us every day just to make sure that we know that he is okay and leaving kind of condescending, mocking type messages. Oh, you don't have to come over today. I am fine. I am healthy and kicking like a horse. So don't bother coming over. I am okay. Mom will be home in three days. You know, that type of stuff. And that's just like, that is the type of attitude that, um, I'm not going to die this time, am I? That I have was brought up in. Learn that the way you respond to certain activities in your life is the way your life goes. Like, um, some people, you know, are ultimately always looking at the negative side of life. And I know with my history that if I were just to look at the negative side of life, I'm going to have, um, oops, did I bring any smooth, I don't think I need smooth stone for the build. Um, I'm going to have you know, lots of depression issues. So I've learned to, no matter how bad a situation is, is to find the good. There's nobody living down here right now. I mean, there's obviously people living down here, but all the people that go up north for the summer, 98% um, of them have already done it. At least where I work. There's some other routes that uh, people leave a little bit later. Um, because people who come down, oh, mother trucker, people who come down here who live in condos in the winter tend to leave earlier, and people who come down here and live in houses, obviously a house is a much better place to live than a condo, they tend to, um, leave a little bit later. And where I work is all condos, so they're all gone. And the people who work in the houses, I mean, come down and live in the houses, um, a lot of them are still here. I tend to, when you see me in public and stuff, I'm always smiling, I'm always saying hi to people, and I'm not afraid to greet them and whatever. And part of that is because I'm six feet and I'm about three feet wide. I have huge ass shoulders. I um, look like I should be a linebacker basically in a football team. And now add the fact that 
you know, I used to be around 400 pounds. Um, I'm a scary looking dude and I shave my head and which, you know, people, not so much now, but initially the people who look like Mr. Clean, <laughs> uh, people were afraid of, you know, uh, and I kind of make sure even before you kind of beat me if I'm greeting somebody I don't go over the top I act like myself but I, I think the reason why I act this way is to make sure that people know they have nothing to fear by me when I was about 23 years old I was already completely bald I didn't have the Phil Collin bald I had the full I'm gonna take you out the full bald well, not even some of my closest friends didn't even know I was bald because I always wore either a Red Sox hat or a Bruins hat because I'm pretty fond of hockey. Um, and so that's the Boston Bruins, the Baby Bees. Um, so a lot of people didn't even know I was bald. And I remember, and this ain't, you know, uh, a great story, I guess, that I should be saying online, but... Um, one of my friends was getting married, and uh, we had the bachelor party, and we were at a strip joint. And I remember, um, it was actually one of the people in the band I was on. I remember even the people in the band, and really, I was one of those people, I took off my hat, and people would go, oh yeah, that's right, you're bald. Because I looked so different. And um, I was struggling with relationships and stuff, and not really... Um, I was finding lots of female friends, but I wasn't finding lots of female lovers. So I asked one of the my friends what I should do, and she's like, "Okay, you have long hair and you're bald. You look like freaking Gallagher, the comedian. That's not a sexy look. So shave your head, um, grow some facial hair. Women like the the." Uh, tough, angry looking, scary looking guys. And uh, I'm trying to think what else she told me to do. But uh, anyways, I did do that. And uh, <laughs> amazingly, within four or five days, I ran into Stacy. And amazingly, we're still together. We had a rough ride, a very rough ride. But we pounded out our disagreements and our insecurities and whatever is behind that stuff. So never be afraid to ask somebody um, how they did something that they did that you are kind of jealous of or wanting to do yourself. Because can you imagine like if somebody came up to you and asked you how you did that? It's great. I want to do that in my life. That would kind of like totally psych you out. You'd be like, oh yeah, man, thanks. I, I can't believe that somebody actually wants to, you know, is looking up at what I'm doing and wanting to do it themselves. So it's not like, uh, it's not something that people are going to be upset about if you go up to them and ask. They'll be flattered, is what I'm trying to say. So... Just do it. You know, it's just like anything else. I'm afraid to ask this person out. Well, just do it because what's the worst that can happen? No? Oh. Oh my god. This person said no. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. Just go out and do it. You know. Stop making excuses. As uh, people have said, some of the best quotes ever <laughs> are things you hear all the time and you just don't realize the importance of the words how many times have you seen a nike ad just do it you know that's what i'm kind of hinting at sorry nike sponsor but hey i don't i'm wearing new balance by the way just to give this ugh, credibility here um but the sayings you hear thousands of times i mean they lose track over time unless you remember 
or realize how important um, those words are. And just do it is like pretty freaking important because it makes sense. I mean, most reason, most uh, reasons why people don't do things is because they're being lazy or whatever. Just go out and do it. You shouldn't um, see what a lot of people do is they see challenges and they go, "Oh my God, this is going to be hard." And uh, in reality, it's not. It's not. You shouldn't be looking at challenges as being hard. You should look at challenges as, yes, I have an opportunity to, you know, learn this. I have an opportunity to figure out how to do this. So when this comes along again, it's not that scary. It's an opportunity. So that's what challenges are. I mean, come on, life is going to throw you melons all day long. And you're just going to have to take these melons and freaking make them work for you. So you're not destroyed by reality because also another thing I've realized working with the public as much as I do you're never going to please everybody you're going to have people no, ma no matter what you do there's going to be people who like it and people who are going to hate it and you just got to do what you think is right what is best and do what you can.